In the passage from Matthew we hear today, Jesus is doing succession planning. Those of you in leadership roles or in any kind of role where you know that you will not be there forever should be familiar with this term, succession planning. My old boss in California, his administrative assistant, had a folder in her desk that was labeled, if I get hit by a bus. Because if she got hit by a bus, what would we do? She laid it out for her successor. Jesus here, in this whole section of Matthew, is preparing the disciples as he goes to Jerusalem to minister and then die and be raised again. He's preparing the disciples to live without him. He starts by asking, who do people say that I am? Who do these crowds that come and go, depending on whether I'm feeding them or not, say that I am? And the disciples give him answers. Maybe a prophet, maybe Jeremiah, who Matthew is constantly alluding to in this text. Maybe John, come back to life. And then Jesus asks the disciples, who do you, those who are sticking with me, say that I am? And Peter answers, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. This is not the first time in Matthew's gospel that Jesus has been named the son of God, not even the first time by humans. We've heard it at his baptism, we'll hear it at his transfiguration. The disciples said it after Jesus calmed a storm for the second time. That convinced them. But now Simon claims it fully. You are the Messiah. You are God's anointed. You are God's son. Once again, Matthew makes clear that throughout his gospel, God is the actor. Jesus says to Simon, Flesh and blood have not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. This isn't something you got on your own, Simon Barjona. You had help from above. Blessed are you. And then Jesus says, You are a stone, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. As we read it and as we have inherited it through in English translations over centuries, it's easy to think that this is a name change, a full new identity. You are Peter. Peter was not a name in Greek, though. Petros was not a name. At best, Jesus is giving him a new nickname. You are stone, something solid. And in Greek, Jesus and Matthew are doing some wordplay. You are stone, and on this stone I will build my church. Jesus changes from the masculine Petros to the feminine Petros, but otherwise it's the same word. Jesus is planning for the future, knowing that he will not be there forever, and telling this movement of 12 and more, look to Peter. He's really sticking with me. Jesus is also making a promise to Peter and to this fledgling movement of Jesus' followers that the gates of Hades will not prevail against the church, against God's gathering. Our reading from Isaiah, which references Abraham, alludes to the understanding that the church will grow. Jesus is planning for after his death, resurrection, and ascension, that the church will need some kind of administration, some kind of living together in unity for how to behave with one another, and promises that the powers of death will not overcome the church. Douglas R.A. Hare says about this passage, if Jesus anticipated his death and subsequent resurrection, which we believe he did, he must surely have given thought to the future of his movement between his death 
and the final resurrection of the dead. Who Jesus is, the Messiah, God's anointed, who has defeated death and has proclaimed that death will not prevail, is the message for the church to proclaim. It's a message we proclaim in good times and in bad. It's a message we proclaim reading Matthew's gospel, understanding that belief and action always go hand in hand. The Greek word for belief is to live a life that is transformed by that which you believe. It's not merely intellectual assent, but rather being, as Paul says, uh, transformed, the transformation of the mind in our passage today. That death will not prevail is the message we proclaim as we do our anti-racism work and as we grieve the racist shooting in Jacksonville yesterday. Who we say Jesus is, the Messiah, the Anointed One, Jesus, the resurrected Christ, impacts our behavior. If we believe that Jesus is God's anointed, who has defeated death and given us and called us to act, this is our message to proclaim, and it is our hope as well. Matthew writes the gates of Hades, but that's more a literary device mean the powers of death will not overcome God's good news. We see that good news as we look around the church, as we are Jesus' ongoing movement proclaiming the power of love over hatred, the power of new life in Christ over death, proclaiming that the church will go on. And we see that beloved in our own administration and succession planning, including the capital campaign that is closing today. Thank you to people who have pledged. The thermometer is intentionally not completely up to date to remind you that those pledging is still available. We have our goal of $35,000 for capital improvements to this building We've gotten pledges of $44,000, friends, to be given over the next three years. We are doing succession planning like Jesus when he anoints Peter. We are planning for our future, planning like Abraham was planning to become many, as Jesus planned for his followers to become many, planning to continue growing and sharing the good news of Jesus, the resurrected Christ. Thank you so much for your hope, for your faith, and for your giving. Thank you for being here as we move forward. Amen.